This is Pastor Fred Nabestogenen on leadership. This is going to be leadership series, volume 1. I'm taking it from Genesis chapter number 2, verse number 15. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Under the four branches of leadership in this particular verse, number one, God took the man. Number two, God put the man into the garden. Number three, God asked the man to dress the garden. Number four, God asked the man to keep the garden. I actually want to speak on leadership to the church, in quote. Though, as an entrepreneur, you can take away the church and put your name there because the church starts as an organization. That's why the church is a ministry, not ministry. M I N I. X T R O I E S ministries. There are a lot of ministry in a ministries. The church is a ministries of ministry. So that's why we're talking about leadership today. And for the church to grow, there are a lot of things we have to look into. God is God of order and principles. So if God has not been following orders and principles, there are things that have come to be that would not be. Genesis chapter 1 from verse 1, the Bible says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God did not create the earth before the heavens. He created the heavens and then the earth. Verse 2, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water, and God said, Before you can say a thing, you must be able to identify something. Nobody just open mouth to talk, haven't identified a problem. Saying something is bringing solution. Under this leadership series, there are some things we want to look into to help us grow the church, govern the church, and discover people in the church. Verse 3 of Genesis chapter 1, the Bible says, And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. How come God have to make light first? That's leadership. Leadership is discovering what is not there that will make every other thing to work. So if God has created something there before life, you won't be able to see what he has created. He knew that the first thing to create before every other thing can follow was light. God decided to create the light. It was after he created the light, he now created every other thing. That is wisdom in leadership. Take note of that. When God was done creating every other thing, he created the sea, the land, the trees, and everything, then he needed earthly leadership to govern what he has created. God decided to make man. That's when I take us to that chapter 2, verse 15. And the Lord God took the man, the man that he has created. Take note. When God was creating Adam, he needed no other man to create Adam. He did not create Adam with a sperm. That's why our God is bigger than the doctors, bigger than everything in this whole world. Sometimes a woman can say, oh, uh, they say my husband have no sperm count. They say this and that, this and that. God did not create the first man from sperm. So that is a miracle working God. If the miracle working God can actually come down to give us rules and steps in leadership, then we are good to go. Today I want to speak on leadership for church growth. Before a church can grow, there are things we must understand. Number one, effective coordinating humans and other resources for the accomplishment of a worldly goal. We need it in leadership. Very, very important. Effectively coordinate humans and resources. In the church, we have just two things. We have humans and resources. The humans are the people that God has given to you. The resources are the finances that come into the church. So you must be able to effectively coordinate the humans. And then, after coordinating the humans, you need to also use the resources and coordinate the resources to accomplish a particular goal that you have set for the church as well for the organization. Then number two, provide direction and a common vision. As a leader, you must provide direction and a common vision. Number three, in leadership balancing, you must inspire trust. Then number four, in leadership balancing, you must provide an environment for people to discover their purpose on earth as well as in the organization. 
Then number five, in leadership balancing, you must provide a tool for identification of new and future leaders. So these are some five steps I'm actually going to talk about under this leadership series. Let's go back to number one. Effectively coordinating humans and other resources for the accomplishment of a worthy goal. As a church, you are to have at least one goal and the goal must be time bound. The goal must be realistic. The goal must be achievable. You must understand these three keys. That effectively coordinate humans and other resources for the accomplishment of a worthy goal as a pastor or as a general pastor. It will be an error if you are the one running with the vision. Even God told us in Habakkuk chapter 2, And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision, one, make it plain, two, upon tables. So that write the vision is the point. That make it plain, disseminate it, don't hold back information. Upon table, make information reachable that he may run that read it. It is the person that reads the vision, that runs with the vision. As a general overseer, your duty is to write the vision down and to be able to explain the vision down to us for everybody to understand. It will be an error for general overseer to be the one running with everything. How do you call a church that the pastor is the one take opening prayers, first teaching, praises, first prayers, the message, the offering, tithe, benediction, everything. Oh boy, you will die. Even Moses, when the father of Moses came to meet Moses and see how Moses was running things. Ah, he now said to Moses, Sir, oh boy, see now, let me give you counsel. If you continue like this, you will die on time. Set leader, let them handle all these things. So that anyone they cannot handle, they will bring it to you. Have you asked yourself, why is it that some pastors die on time? It's because of the too much stress. How is it too much stress? We will look into it just now because they don't trust people. And if you don't trust somebody, you can't be trusted as well. As the general overseer, God has given you the vision. Write it down. I have written it down. Put it upon the table. Let it reachable. And then give people access to it. Though I know that there are some bad people, if they get access to your vision, they will smash their vision. But not in all situations. Under that, effectively coordinate humans and other resources for the accomplishment of a worthy goal. Select the people, coordinate them with wisdom, discover their value, create a platform for them, and give them access. To be able to operate very very important you need humans more than any other resources because human will go for you where money cannot go human will be with you when you have no money human is the one to actually broadcast you we have to give value to humans any pastor targeting money disdaining the humans will soon leave the ministry there are some churches Money, 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 money is the order of the day. Well, I know we need money to run the ministry. But we don't bring ministry before the ministry. Because the ministry is the one that gives birth to the ministry. So that people say, okay, you have 200 people in your church. If these 200 people can give 10,000 10, naira, you will drive the people. There are some churches when you go. Today, they'll be 50. Tomorrow, they'll be 70. They'll drop down to 30. Back to 50 again. They rotate. Not that they don't want to come. That 50 are the ones that say, whether they talk or not, I will go. The other 20 say, ah, if I go, maybe every last Sunday of the month, they will receive. So I will not go to church. So now I go to church based on calculated frequency. It's not supposed to be so. The church is not a place for business. Many have turned into business. God will judge you. Under effectively coordinating humans and other resources. Now, this other resource is not talked about the money. It talked about the talent of the people. It talked about the purpose of the people. It talked about the vision of the people. Because actually, the vision of the organization 
cannot be actualized without the vision of the people. Remember that God created the people with a purpose. If they come to this world and they did not achieve their purpose on earth, it's a sign that they are failed. Don't push them into achieving your own purpose while their purpose is dead. A man cried out in the Bible and said, my mother children have made me a keeper of their own vineyard, but my own vineyard have I not kept. God did not judge him because he kept other people's vineyard. God judged him because he could not keep his own vineyard. You must understand that. So, in the church, you must be able to understand even the people that you are leading, they have their purpose on earth. So, you must create a room for them to establish their purpose on earth, even in the general vision. That's when you will not lose the people. Number two, provide direction and a common vision. Many churches have no direction. Today, they want to be like this church. Tomorrow, they want to be like that church. Next tomorrow, another church. They don't have directions. You don't run a ministry like that. You don't run an organization like that. Any church that don't have direction, leave people nowhere. Remember, nobody wants to join a vehicle that does not have a tag on it. When I mean a tag, once you want to join a vehicle, you must know where that vehicle is going to. Because if you just park a car, car park, and say, enter, nobody will enter. They will ask you, where are you going? As a church, you must know where you are going to. And then once you know where you are going to, you'll be able to sell it to the people. And then those going to that direction, we enter because they are going to the same direction with you. That's how a church runs. You must provide a common vision. When I say a common vision, the vision must be able to have rooms to accommodate everybody. That's why I talked about ministries and the sex place. Don't misquote me. When you have a vision, let me take this for instance. As a church, I have a vision that I want to have one million members in my church. Okay, that could be a vision. Mm -hmm. So people have that as a vision. Why others can get a vision that, okay, my vision is to empower one million members to be an entrepreneur. It can be your vision as a church as well. Other vision is to depopulate hell and populate heaven. That's a very perfect vision. Other vision could be that closing first prophets, winning their members into the true church. It's a vision. It's a good one also. In that vision, you must be able to create room. How can I achieve this? I can't just wake up and just achieve that. I must set rules. I must set plans. I must give time bound. It must be realistic. There are things I need to do. I have to create room for people also. There are people that God called to be evangelists. There are other God called to be pastors. There are other God called to be a prophet, to be a teacher. In fact, there's five food ministry. And these people, they are in the church. I have to give them room. I have to work more on them. Because I can do that alone. I need these people to achieve all these goals. That's the common vision. Then, when I go to number three, inspire trust. Any church that must grow must learn to trust people. So I want to talk to general overseers, the Jews. As a general overseer, you must trust your associate pastors. You must trust your leaders. Because any man you don't trust cannot deliver his best to you. Don't expect someone you don't trust to give you his best or her best. It's not possible. For instance, there are ways we prove that we don't trust the people, but we don't know. When a general overseer is asking the members of a branch pastor about the church, come, how is your branch doing? How is the message that your pastor is preaching? That general overseer is already killing the church because you are already telling the people the branch pastor is no fit to be a pastor there. Remember, in the church, not everybody will actually like the pastor. If you ask the one that does not like the branch pastor, of course, he or she will tell you things you actually want to hear. You will kill your own vision when you now act based on what people tell you about the branch pastor. 
I'm a branch pastor in my church. I'm a member of Assurance and Salvation Ministry Fire Center under Reverend Dr. Snegare. He trusted me. That's why he gave me a branch to handle. And things are actually working well for us. As a general pastor, if you are not asking your branch members about the church, asking other people about the wealth of the church, instead of asking who you delegate, you are already killing the church. The church cannot grow like that. When people discover you don't trust them, they can't actually work well with you. It's a point you need to understand. Then number four, provide an environment for people to discover their purpose. Release and maximize their potential. There must be a plan for the people as well. Listen, the church as an organization, the vision of the church and the mission statement cannot be achieved by the building. You can only achieve this with the people. And you must create room for the people to discover their purpose. Any man that can actually discover his purpose in the church will actually help you to achieve your purpose. You must create room, environment, conducive enough for people to discover their purpose. For people to release their potential. For people to maximize their potential. In the church, we have a lot of people that are singers. We have a lot of people as entrepreneurs. We have a lot of people that are into different trades. You must create room for these people to achieve their own purpose. Because once they achieve their purpose in that church, they will promote the vision of that church faster. Number five, provide a tool for identification of new and future leaders. Any church that jumps into one vision to another, jump into one dream to another, you know, within one year you can jump into four, five, six dreams and no one is achieved. You can't grow now. It's not possible. And when you send the people and you don't give them the right resources to work, it can't be possible. Just for instance, General Vasya has just got to open a branch church and say, hey, take money, go and rent that place, start a church. He went there, no chairs, no equipment. He did not even send at least seven people to go with him from that area, go and then began a work there. You see only the person there. Don't be surprised that when that person grows that place, it will change the sandboard. Because you never sent anybody. He went there in his sweat. So you must give them the right tools. I know this message, you may not like this message, but it's the truth. You know, sometimes the truth is very bitter. Go to a social place, go and open a church, you send the person, you give the person enough resources to start it. If possible, send delegates to join him. Once they raise that place to a year, then the delegate return back while he continues. That's how to raise branches. You can't say only one person, go and start a church. You just tell the person, go and start your own church. That is the meaning of that. Some keys now. That identification of new and future leaders. Many people, they don't have future leaders in the churches. Many people, they've not been able to identify leaders in the church. That's why the death of some general Vasya leads to the death of the church. It is the state that the church have grown to before the geo dies. That is the level they remain. Because they couldn't identify new and future leaders. One major key to leadership is discipline. This is one thing that we lack in the church. Discipline. Starting from the general affairs. Number one, discipline in our speech. You must mind the way you talk to people, to talk to your subject. You must mind the way you talk. Remember, they are human. They are flesh and blood. And also remember, not everyone is actually born again. You must mind the way you talk to your leaders in the presence of their subject. So you must be disciplined in your speech. Number two, you must be disciplined in your behavior before your people. There are some you just behave to your leader or your branch pastor in a welcome manner. And people are there. This can keep the zeal of that your leader or your branch pastor. Number three. You must be disciplined in our body languages. 
Because sometimes our body language speak louder than our words. Be disciplined in your body language. Many pastors who have driven people away from the church. Many general pastors have driven leaders away from the church without their knowing. Number four, you must be disciplined in the way you conclude about people that you are leading. Sometimes you just hear one thing concerning your leader, you conclude it immediately. You are not a true Jew. You need to be born again. So you have to be disciplined in the way you conclude. Even Jesus did not conclude over Peter. When Peter denied him thrice, Jesus, before he denied him, he told him, said, you will deny me. After he denied him, he's not coming that, hey, you have denied me, so you are going to hear you are a failure, you are a loser, you are this and that. He didn't say that. Rather, when Mary came, he said, go and tell my disciple and tell Peter, in quote, to say upon all that you have done, I still love you. I still believe in you. It was that same Peter that gathered the people he asked for apostle, and then power came down. If Jesus had watered down Peter before the people, he would have not had the courage to stand in Acts of Apostles chapter 2. We must be disciplined in the way we conclude about people. Failure must come. And you must know that failure is not final. So we have to sit down to know some things. So with this little point, this is just volume one. God bless you.